Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're back out on the Audi TT and today's job is all about the PCV system. So positive crank case ventilation system. These are very common on a lot of the modern classics and involves a lot of piping to channel air to better create efficiency with the engine. And over time, and certainly on these cars that are now sort of 15 years plus, the rubber involved in the piping breaks down, corrodes and ultimately splits which can cause a whole host of problems with your engine. Mainly misfires, bad idling, uh, bad fuel ratio mixes, so mine is absolutely in that position where I'm getting very rich running, uh, causing black smoke and uh, clogging of carbon on the spark plugs and so on. So, the piping which I have here uh, involves eight pieces in total and uh, the job with the TT really uh, sits with uh, space and space is your friend on this type of job now there isn't much of it that's the challenge and uh, a lot of this piping sits underneath the inlet manifold which sort of hides everything that you need access to if you'd seen my previous video on how I changed the thermostat it's exactly the same place that we have to operate so at the front of the engine under the manifold and space is very tight so I'm going to walk through some of the methods in which I'm going to try to use to remove all of this piping in one set so undoing parts on the left and right hand side and trying to remove it all in one uh, basically yeah set of pipes uh, as one unit rather than all the individual pieces and then I can fit all the unit pieces back together and then reinstall. Ideally this job you should remove the air uh, in like manifolds, that's the guidance through the manuals but uh, apparently there is a way to potentially do it without doing that so that's what I'm going to try so we'll get out to the car and uh, give this a go. Okay, as before, what we have to do is start to remove a lot of this plastic covering here and here and uh, all the piping, which is um, almost impossible to see, all sits underneath this piece here and a bracket. So we need to clear as much of this out of the way as possible so we can get access to the piping, um, including here. So uh, let's start removing all of these bits. seen me remove all of those bits once again as I did with the previous video getting to the thermostat um, I've now removed this plastic bit undone this bracket um, there's a pipe here that joins just here underneath which is uh, just a, a, a twist and pull um, good to remove that and put it out there it attaches to this bracket here so it's, it's a good one to remove and push out the way as you can see we've got this sort of bracket in the way and um, what I'll do is I'll, un I'll unplug this electrical connector and then probably just pull this back a little bit the reason being is that the pipes we have to change is this one which comes uh, from the air inlet from the air filter should I say joins at the back here as you can see this one's had some sort of previous repair which um, will no doubt be leaking which is uh, firstly one cause and as you follow that pipe around let's try and get a bit of light on this just so we have uh, a view that goes underneath 
and you can see the one that's dirty just at the back there and then flows underneath the manifold if that will that's one of the bits that plug in there and then down there to that piece there and that's the bit that uh, sometimes can be a bit troublesome trying to uh, remove as you can see there's a a pin that you pull just out with a screwdriver that uh, sort of copper looking piece attached which allows us then to pull the pipe upwards now there is a rubber seal uh, like an o-ring and over time these comparison uh, obviously make it a little bit difficult to remove uh, similar to that uh, pin there which uh, has a plastic version just there on the coolant temp sense which I've just changed as well so as you can see if I can uh, remove that pin undo that the piping continues underneath it's not very good uh, angle I know but um, my hope is to remove that uh, this piece here which goes to the back and again just very very tight in every aspect <laughs> but what I'll do is I'm gonna try and remove this so I can start to uh, remove this pipe as a, as a whole unit with uh, the one that's connected under there so uh, let's continue trying to remove these bits pipe which joins to this part of the piping coming in from the airbox which is there and uh, you can see some of the oil which uh, is present through the piping which is expected um, coming out of the crankcase the rocker cover gasset should I say or rocker cover and um, that pipe there then joins to this one here which has been uh, at some point botched or somehow repaired so um, yeah we'll look at uh, that in a bit more detail but as you can see the pipe runs down underneath and joins to that part there now if you can just make out there is a, a three-way connector so one goes that way down to the left one goes up to the right which is for that pipe there and then the third part coming towards us here runs up under the air manifold and it looks like that pipe has been changed before because as you can see and thankfully it's got a screwdriver head Jubilee clip where most of the factory fit clips are these here which are a real pain great during the manufacturing process but a nightmare when you're having to replace stuff because they're generally not usable again so you have to find clips that uh, match the right size so very thankful that this has been changed so I'm going to undo this one I'm going to remove this bracket holding this electrical connector here which is at that bolt there just to get this bracket out the way so I can pull that pin that uh, copper pin there or that um, copper like looking or should I say sort of bronzy looking pin outwards this way which will release this pipe and hopefully I can start to tug that one upwards so we'll move that one remove the one that connects here to the airlet manifold and hopefully wiggle all of the complete piece as one including this outwards through this tiny hole that's the plan okay wish me luck So 
so just continuing on um, you can see the piping is moving freely there and um, just it's really really hard to see but let's see if I can uh, get a light on this it's um, literally just a plastic connector here on on this plastic uh, piece here that um, the tube just slots into so it's just like a holder clip so just give that a little uh, push outwards he says <laughs> it's not going to work with one hand so let me uh, free up my uh, hands here and just unclip that and let's uh, wiggle this all out Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, pipework that I've just removed and uh, you know the first thing you'll see is that this has uh, been botched in some way now I just um, applied a little bit of pressure as I uh, removed actually after I removed it just to see how brittle this was and yeah it just sort of fell apart I mean it, it's uh, it's definitely on its last legs uh, not to say there was a leak in this part of the pipe but you know obviously it was leaking up here because no matter how well you try and patch that air finds a way as they say uh, equally one thing that is very noticeable is the joining rubber pipes here I mean literally you, you push it and it just collapses so I can imagine if that is under any type of pressure you you can see that I'm just pushing my thumb in and look at the dent in that rubber so it's um it's not holding its shape very well like I say this piece here looks like it's fairly new and has been replaced so it's got the uh, Jubilee clip on that side as well this is the valve that sits uh, the one-way valve so we've got a replacement one of those and these are the original clips that are used to hold everything together so I'm gonna have to find Jubilee clips or uh, I have got um, actually steel uh, yeah steel cable ties which will probably do the job just as well so while this is all off the car I can fit it properly so we'll compare this to the new stuff I've got but yeah that definitely looks worse for wear and then finally if that focuses you can see inside it's uh, not a pretty place in there it's pretty gunked up so um, anything to help with better airflow is, is always good in the vacuum lines so yeah that is the removal of the pipes under the uh, inlet manifold which joins to the top of your oil filter housing and then ultimately up to there so this pipe here as well I should have uh, added to the mix which is uh, like so so yeah that's that's how it ultimately looks so let's put all the new stuff uh, side by side and see where we go from there. Okay, so here side by side is the new and the old PCV system. And uh, these are the vacuum pipes that can cause all sorts of uh, mischief with your engine if uh, you allow them to crack and split and uh, don't address them. So straight off the bat, and uh, I've tried to uh, lay it out so it looks like for like, so you can see which bits are where. Uh, ultimately, this one's still clipped together here, but um, this pipe here joins the air manifold. You've got your one-way valve. This is your uh, T-junction or your, uh, yeah, your T-connector. This one here connects to the part that goes into the top of the oil housing, oil filter housing, and then this one goes off and joins up to the piping where your air filter is. Now, uh, straight off the bat here, we know that this one is failing and uh, with the new one, it's very solid. So that's not gonna compress under any type of vacuum, which is great. Um, we've got this part here, which was no doubt leaking. And uh, this is gonna be a nice snug fit here. And uh, overall, the condition far better than this uh, the other thing ultimately this one hasn't cracked and it hasn't left anything in the housing but just make sure you remove the rubber o-ring that's in there this one is yeah it feels like plastic <laughs> it's that hard so i don't know if that was even sealing where the new one is nice and pliable and rubbery so overall 
the new stuff should do the job the old stuff wasn't doing and uh, we'll get this all fitted back in the car in the same reverse order so the holes all cleaned just made sure that uh, there's nothing in the way I don't know if that's going to focus there we go so that's all ready to receive the pipe with the new o-ring and then we just uh, start to put everything back through the way it came out what I am going to do actually is I'm going to join these pipes one two three four and I'm going to uh, connect them with my uh, steel cable ties and uh, we're going to slide all that in as one so I'm not going to do it bit by bit much easier to do it as one piece so uh, let's get on and uh, put the cable ties on and make sure that's all locked down nicely Okay, so we have all the new piping fitted together nice and neatly, as you can see, in the same format as it was taken off the car. And uh, if you haven't got these, um, where are they, those cable ties in steel, then uh, yeah, Jubilee clips are, are fine. Uh, I would even argue you'd probably get away with uh, a good uh, set of plastic. Uh, cable ties as well but um, I've got metal ones and I've got this great tool here which really tightens them down nice and tightly and then you can just flick that up to do a nice clean cut that allows you to have this all nice neat and tidy so from that perspective um, that's all now ready to go back on the car and uh, not to forget your little o-ring which is uh, just to make sure you get a good seal as it fits into the top of the oil filter housing. Once that is slotted through, we can refit the top piece, making all the connections nice and airtight. So let's get on and thread this through back into the car. tips just as I'm putting this back together obviously um, you take the uh, oil uh, dipstick housing off you reconnect that and um, that bracket that holds uh, this electrical piece to the engine block you just put uh, back together I unclipped this one so that's now clipped back together and slotted back into its uh, holding position and now we just put some um, this bracket slots into the hole of the oil dipstick 
there so that will clip back in and then it's two bolts one this side one that side and then this pipe that we disconnected reconnects there and then uh, we'll move on and reconnect these bits here and that's it so slowly working back through what we disconnected Okay, so we are all connected back. The top pipe that joins this pipe that runs down to the components underneath, which um, obviously now you can maybe just make out there. So I don't think it's gonna focus because uh, the light is not great. But anyway, it's, it's there. <laughs> and uh, everything went back nice and easy. So just the covers to replace now and uh, just a few more checks just to make sure that everything is tight and locked in. And that is it. That is how you replace a positive crank case ventilation system on an Audi TT Mark I. And uh, once we get all those bits back in, I'll give the engine a fire up and hopefully that would have solved my rich running. Fingers crossed.